How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today I want to talk to you about the crypto markets. We have some big news to cover from new ETFs being approved all the way to new funds, hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into certain cryptocurrencies. I want to look at what some of the whales are doing and I want to tell you about why I bought more, a good portion more of a crypto over the last 24 hours. And actually today it came out with some really big news. So I wanna cover that, I have a lot to talk about. If you guys don't mind, hitting the like button and subscribe button, I really do appreciate that. It helps out the channel a lot. There are links underneath the video too, to BlockFi. There I have a significant amount of my crypto, a significant amount of stablecoin too. So that way you can get up to 9% on some of your stablecoin. They gave you a $250 bonus or up to a $250 bonus too when you sign up using that link. There's also a link down there to Unstoppable Domains where you can get a readable username, a readable wallet address. So you could have something like sam.crypto and it's a lot easier when you send payments. I actually had a friend recently that had the wrong address that he put in and lost a significant amount of money. If you had something like sam.crypto, it'd be really hard to mess that up. So if you guys want, there is a link to this underneath the video as well. Now, it's a great day to be a crypto investor. Overall, the market is up about 6%. We're at that $2 trillion mark and Bitcoin is up around 44,000, so just short of it. And what's happening is kind of similar to what happened when we were falling down, which is we're not we're not retesting anything. Like when we fell down, we just fell and fell and fell. We didn't really bounce that much. Now we're just not really falling down on the way up. We're just going up and to the right, it seems like. So we broke above that $42,000 level that we said was really important to hold and flip into support. Now we haven't even gotten that many downturns. We haven't even gotten close to 42,000 since we broke it recently. Ethereum above 3,100. We have a lot of cryptos up 5, 10, 15 percent today. XRP is up 17 percent. We have Shiba Inu up 46 percent. Polygon up 16 percent. So it's a very good day in the market. Now we did get some news about an ETF. The NASDAQ has approved a Bitcoin miners ETF by Valkyrie. So this is really interesting because as time goes on, it becomes more and more obvious that as as we get more and more ETFs like this, it's stupider and stupider for the SEC not to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF, right? If we have a futures, if we have Bitcoin miners ETF, those are, I think Bitcoin miners are actually riskier than Bitcoin, right? They're like a leverage play on Bitcoin. They go up more, they fall down more. So this is gonna be really interesting. When this gets approved, people start putting money in this, they're going to have at least 80% of their net assets in firms that derive at least 50% of their profit from Bitcoin mining. So think CleanSpark, think Mara, think Riot. A lot of companies are going public too in Bitcoin mining. So this is gonna make it a lot easier to invest in a broad basket of them, kind of just a bet on the general Bitcoin mining market. And it's kind of nice too, because when you invest in an individual Bitcoin miner, you're betting that they will not only be able to mine more and more Bitcoin over time, but you are saying that they will mine more or get more miners than other Bitcoin miners. Because as the whole hash rate goes up, you have to stay at least on pace with that growth to mine the same amount of Bitcoin. So if you can just buy every public miner out there, you're not betting that one's gonna continue to grow uh, more than another. You can just buy it. And if you could if you could get every single Bitcoin miner out there and a small portion of it, that means that you're just basically, basically buying a percentage of all the mining for the rest of existence, right? Uh, obviously, they're gonna get new miners and stuff like that, but it's a much safer way of going about it. And it's a lot easier to calculate what's gonna happen in the future, assuming you make certain assumptions for Bitcoin. Hope that makes sense. But a lot of these miners have fallen down a significant amount. Mara has fallen down about 66%, been cut in about one third from its prior price. We have Riot that has gone down 77%. It actually fell all the way down to negative 83%. Clean Spark has also fallen a lot too. It's gone down about 80%. It was about 85% on its lowest. So these Bitcoin miners have been destroyed recently. I mean, CleanSpark has the best price to sales ratio. I guess you would call it price to sales, but price to mining essentially. Their Bitcoin right now is about 10 a day, which even at $40,000 Bitcoin is about $12 million a month. 
you, you calculate that out, they're gonna make about 150 million in Bitcoin mining this year if they can just mine the same amount of Bitcoin and their market cap is about 307 million. So much of this is profit too. I think their margin's 80 to 85%. So if they're hitting net income of $100 million or more, and their and their market caps 300 that's just crazy because bitcoin hasn't even exploded in price yet so i just wanted to cover that this might be a good etf if you're looking for something a little bit riskier in the crypto market of course i can't give financial advice but i do own clean spark i actually own some options on clean spark too which is about as risky as it gets but we do have to cover this too we have the leverage ratio here uh, for Bitcoin. And what's interesting here is in the past, we had seen price go up for Bitcoin and the leverage shot up. So when we go back to December, right, we were at about a 0.17 leverage ratio, $47,000 Bitcoin. We went up to about a 40, oh, well, let's say $51,000 Bitcoin. Our leverage went up by about 0 0.03. So almost 20% increase for a $4,000 move. Over the last few days, we went from 37,000 up to 42,500, and we barely moved. Uh, we barely moved at all in leverage. So what's interesting here is it's either shorts getting liquidated and having to buy back, uh, having to cover, or maybe it's just a lot of people not going on leverage, not buying on leverage. So either way, it is good for holders, right? We're not getting to that point where we're getting really overextended again. Now we have been very high in leverage recently, but we've been this way for a handful of weeks. So we've actually come down in price since we were at a higher leverage. So I think that is good. Obviously, there could still be a lot of volatility and there will be a lot of volatility because this is a very new market, but it looks pretty, pretty good over the last few days. We haven't have a lot of people go on a lot of extreme leverage, it looks like. Now it's hard to break down exactly what this leverage is, but uh, that is nice to see. We also have the all exchange reserve here. This hasn't been changing too much, honestly. I mean, we saw some big changes back here, but it's pretty much stayed uh, unchanged for the most part. Now, I think it is important to remember that there are, what, 55 million millionaires, I think just in the world, but this is going up all the time, especially with inflation. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 60, 70, 80 million, maybe even more than that. And we only have a couple million Bitcoin. So when you break it down, this is something to remember. If every, if every millionaire wants a Bitcoin, they can't have it. And there are entities that continue to get more and more. And the miners aren't selling all their Bitcoin either. So it's really going to be hard to get your hands on a full Bitcoin in a couple of years from now. I want to cover this and we have some news again on the crypto that I bought recently and we have the news about the huge amount of, well, the big news that came to them right after I bought. But I thought this was really interesting. Venezuelans reportedly hit by new Bitcoin tax of up to 20%. The government approved a new tax bill aiming to collect up to 20% in taxes from cryptocurrency transactions. Now, this is targeting large financial transactions. And we know this is happening in the US too, right? If you make a lot of money, you have to pay capital gains tax, but it sounds like this is from cryptocurrency transactions, not gains. So it says it aims to collect two to 20% from transactions in any currencies other than those issued by Venezuela. So they wanna collect a significant amount. I mean, it sounds like, again, they're not taxing the gains like we do here in the US. They're just throwing out a tax in case you go back and forth with someone. Now, I think this is a little bit dangerous. I understand why they're doing this because they want people to use their own currency. But I think a lot of people will just use cryptocurrency illegally. We've seen this in other countries and this is gonna to continue to happen where if governments become too strict, people will just not report it, right? If I'm paying someone down the street to do work for me, maybe I won't report it, right? At least if uh, in these people's minds, I mean, for anyone, I think that they would be tempted to do that. But with 20% on transactions, I think they're gonna have a lot of people putting up a fit. But I want to run some numbers to see, does it still make sense to invest in crypto with this 20% tax or 20% uh, transaction cost? And I looked at their inflation and I knew that it was gonna be high, but look at this, 19,000% in 2019. 
2400 percent in 2020 2700 percent in 2021 so i want to run the numbers and see what if you were a millionaire and this was happening to you in the u.s imagine we have this inflation in the u.s instead so you had one million dollars in 2018 how much would you have been left with after that 19,000 percent inflation well you would have had about five thousand dollars left over okay what happens in the next few years Take a guess, maybe write down in the comments, let me know how much you think after three years of inflation in Venezuela, how much you would have left. You would have $8. And I don't know if I, I don't think I did the math wrong on this. This is a crazy amount of inflation and I feel bad for anyone that had money in their own currency. This is insane. So yes, I still think it makes sense to buy Bitcoin because we were doing this if it was just the US dollar. Think about how much Bitcoin has gone up in that time. If you had had a million US dollars worth of Bolivar, Bolivar, and you would put that in Bitcoin, think about how much that's appreciated over time. That is just crazy. And I hope that people realize how bad this is. I'm sure they do because they're probably wheeling around buckets full of money to get bread and stuff like that. We've, we've seen that in some countries, but this is just a crazy amount of inflation and they've really failed their country in my opinion. Now, moving on to some positive news, Polygon raises $450 million in Sequoia-led funding round. This just comes on the back of all the other great news coming from Polygon. They're shifting their focus to Web3 development and are placing greater emphasis on scalability. Now, it seems like they've already placed a lot of emphasis on this because they're one of the most scalable one of the most scalable blockchains out there. They say that the funding was led by Sequoia. They had 40 venture capital funds in it, uh, including SoftBank Vision Fund 2, very popular name that we hear a lot about, Get Galaxy Digital, Tiger Global, Republic Capital, and also Kevin O'Leary participated in this. And we actually heard that he was interested recently in Polygon, but now he's taking uh, he's taking advantage of this latest funding round. So they say that the, they will use this to expand the scaling solutions, which include Polygon POS, Polygon Edge, and Polygon Avail, and support mainstream adoption of Web3 applications. The team will also continue to invest in zero knowledge or ZK technology after committing over 1 billion to such initiatives in November, 2021. And they've talked about this before. They say that even if Ethereum 2.0 comes, it still won't provide enough scalability. The proof of stake upgrade will move you to about 20 transactions per second from about 13. So they still think that they really are the leader. They really need to be used in the future because there's gonna be a ton of transactions. Now they've come out with a ton of news recently. They had this launch of a $200 million Web3 fund before. They also had a couple big acquisitions recently. And I still think that they are one of the best cryptocurrencies out there. Of course, do your own research. I don't really care what you do, but I am investing and I'm putting my money where my mouth is. They have reached a milestone of 7,000 dApps deployed on the network. This was just a few days ago, going from about 3,000 to 7,000 in only three months. So this is the kind of company, or this is the kind of crypto, I should say, that I wanna invest in. Something that's growing quickly, solving, issues and also there's a lot of money flowing into it now this is one of the cryptos that i bought recently and i made my video yesterday talking about selling a couple of cryptos but then putting it into better cryptos i thought at least ones that i thought would appreciate faster and this is one of the cryptos that i poured money into i feel like there's so much happening with polygon that it would be really short-sighted not to research it more and not to invest more in it personally now if like I said, do whatever you want, but I am really excited about Polygon for this upcoming year. We also have to just remember that there's so much money flowing into cryptocurrencies. I just looked up raises and you can see $450 million, $200 million, $38 million. We have more money being raised all the time. And it's important to just realize if all these VCs are throwing a bunch of money into crypto. Of course, we are getting news about it all the time. So it's really easy to find more money flowing into crypto, probably more than other sectors. You don't hear about it with real estate or with stocks. But I think it is important to watch that there's so much new VC funding coming in that obviously it is looking really bullish for the development of crypto as time goes on. This is only going to be stronger and stronger technically and these VCs want to get in really badly. 
We did get the new digital asset fund flows weekly report. This shows what institutional investors are doing and a lot of these different providers are doing like Grayscale, CoinShares, 21 shares. And we had another inflow. We had another big inflow for the third week in a row. Bitcoin led the way, multi-asset kind of spreading out the wealth. Uh, was another 15.5 million more money coming off ethereum and we've seen that a lot recently but we had a little bit of money flowing out of binance and then a little bit coming into solana Polkadot, cardano so overall uh, there is money flowing in which is a good sign too looking a little bit more bullish now i talked about the crypto that i had to buy more of which was polygon i also bought some more solana we were just talking about how Ethereum doesn't still or still doesn't scale up very quickly from 13 to 20. But I think Solana will be the the crypto for higher transactions, uh, for more frequent transactions. And it's just one of the best products out there. Now, I got some hate from people saying that they're going to unsubscribe because I hate on Cardano all the time. That's not true. But I, I still hold a decent part of my bag, about 60% of it. So if you're thinking I hate Cardano, I don't. But obviously, there are cryptos that have just done a lot better and are growing a lot quicker, have a lot more use cases than Cardano. So I'm not a fanboy of anything. I am trying to invest and make the biggest alpha that I can. If you guys want more videos, I did post a couple really good videos recently, I think. First of all, how to skip your bank. These six crypto options will make you a lot more money using crypto instead of your bank to do normal transactions, whether it's checking account transactions or all the way up to getting mortgages. Also, I talked about the easiest way to mine Bitcoin, very profitable and actually might be even more profitable over the last few days. So definitely check out this video. It's an interview with someone that works at this crypto company. You don't have to hold the miners yourself. They actually do it for you and barely cost any money to do that or barely charge you any money. And then I also talked about a couple of cryptos I sold. If you guys want to check out that video, you can definitely check that out too. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Definitely check out the link down below to BlockFi and Unstoppable and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.